Hello everyone and welcome back to a review of a movie I never knew existed until I searched IMDb for content. Late Night with the Devil is a 2023 movie that has an IMDb rating of 7.1 out of 10 and a popularity of 14 so apparently I'm just missing out on all the new popular movies. Before I even hop into the review, I also recorded my initial reactions to the movie if you would want to see that too. It's still 12 minutes? All that just happened in 6 minutes? <laughs> Just let me know. But man oh man does this movie have way too many studios helping to make it. Our main cast consists of Jack Delroy, our late night TV host, June, our parapsychologist, Carmichael Haig, the skeptic, Chris Stu, the medium, Lily, the possessed demon child, and Gus as the lovable goofy sidekick. And on top of that, we are given, I kid you not, an 8 minute expo dump about Jack Delroy, our main character, who is a late night TV show host who is part of an all-male strange cult thing where they meet out in the woods. <laughs> Gay! Trust me guys, it's totally all on board. Also finding out that Jack's wife has died from lung cancer not too long ago. And this entire 8 minute expo dump is basically an infomercial about the dangers of late night TV hosting. It's bad. It's bad. And how this week is sweeps week on the network and Jack sees this as his chance to save his failing TV show. And supposedly this is the only recording of the events that happened that night. Jack opens with his cringy late night crowd work until he brings out his first guest, Chris Dudu. Sorry, Chris Dudu, the medium. He does your standard fake medium crowd work with reaching out straws in the crowd. This is a girl who you said was beaten and killed. This little girl is me. Until he seems to be possessed by something stronger. An unmarried man with a wedding ring. Causing the lights to fluctuate on set, even saying that there's a mini, a mini looking for someone, a, a man perhaps who wears a wedding ring but is not married. Alluding to Jack as his wife, who he called Minnie, died but he still wears his wedding ring. Which in my opinion, he's still married, she's just dead. But after returning from a commercial break, they bring out Carmichael Haig, a former psychic turned debunker. He even carries around a check for 100 grand with him at all times that he will give to anyone who can prove any type of paranormal research to be real. Which, way to self-report yourself, dude. Now the entire world knows that you can just steal a hundred bands off of you at any time's notice. It makes you the biggest number one target for local muggers. Haig then explains how Chris Dew is a fake until he gets mad and storms off because he's totally real and not fake. But before he leaves, he does the vomit everywhere a la Exorcist. The next guests are June and Lily. June, a parapsychologist who was studying a local satanic cult where the leader had the greatest facial hair known to man. And eventually, the cult pulled a Waco where the local authorities close in on the house only shortly before the cult sets the entire place on fire. The only person to survive said fire is Lily, a girl who is believed to be possessed by a demon. And before you adjust your TV settings, as soon as Lily is on camera, the equipment begins to malfunction. Not a lot, but enough to notice. And Jesus Christ, this child is disturbing. What? That creepy kid is here. They somehow managed to find the most deadpan child I've seen in my life. After this, there is just a bunch of back and forth nonsense between Jack and Lily until Haig decides he's going to go nuclear and continuously say that they are faking it until the audio system malfunctions and shatters almost everything. And in typical horror movie fashion, June gets peer pressured into talking to the demon on live TV Damn it, pure pressure, fine. Even though she is uncomfortable with it. During this intermission though, we find out that Chris Dudu is Chris Gone, as he died on the way to the hospital. Oh, so sad. <laughs> and the entire crew is thinking of jumping ship, but with Jack desperate to save his show, he just isn't having it. But now for the main event, as June begins to interview Lily. And after putting her into a trance, and a very visible and audible difference is observed, when Lily turns into Mr. Wiggles, the demon that wiggles into her head. Lily begins to talk about how June and Jack have a secret little relationship and look a continuity error as her nose is bleeding here, but it doesn't actually start bleeding until shortly after. With the whole event ending with Lily's chair levitating and crashing back down onto the stage. And of course for everyone, this is fascinating. Now that 
that's entertainment. Except for Haig, because he decides to stand like an NPC who's about to beat up your Pokemon for simply walking in the tall grass. But don't you worry, because Haig knows exactly how they did all of this, and that was with hypnotism. Also, how come Haig gets a smoke machine? No one else got all these fancy lights. As Haig hypnotizes Gus, making him think that he's covered in worms and that worms are inside of him until it turns out that it's actually not going to plan and we find out that there were actually worms inside of him. Or so we thought. It turns out that we were all actually hypnotized as they play it back on the studio cameras for us to see that none of it was real and it was just all of us being hypnotized. So I guess hypnotism does work. So due to that, the group decides to replay the section where Lily was being interviewed only to see that what they saw was what was actually happening. Even seeing the spirit of Jack's dead wife was standing behind him. Or at least a CGI ghost version of her was standing behind him. And Haig is big mad as he thinks he's being set up by the entire station until Lily turns into Shocker from Spider-Man and her head splits open for whatever reason. And as I was watching this part, I kept saying that this movie has to really step it up because there were only 18 minutes left and oh boy did it ever as Gus bites the bullet and June gets strung up by her demon necklace thing and Haig unfortunately gets Thanos snapped leaving only Jack left as he stares into the abyss that was once Lily's head. We then appear to be in some sort of loop where Jack is reliving a lot of his old skits from the show until he's joined by the same weird people from his woods cult and Mr. Fa Mr. Facial Hair Man himself shows up again with the final set being his wife on her deathbed where she alludes to the fact that it was his evil, weird, definitely not secretly gay all men's cult performed a ritual that would trade her life for his fame and fortune. As Minnie lays on her deathbed, she begs him to put her out of her misery by stabbing her with the dagger and in my initial viewing of this movie, I predicted exactly what was about to happen. That being, of course, Jack is stabbing Lily. And the movie ends with a slow fade out with Jack hoping it was all just a hypnotism, but that is late night with the devil. And now, it's time for a late night review with me. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right on into the review for the plot. I give it a 2. I feel like the plot was super solid with a good premise. It's a bit annoying how when we were stuck listening to about 15 minutes of the beginning of nothing, but it wasn't bad. Everything was pretty simple to follow. It's not like everything was super convoluted. I mean, it basically had to feed you everything on a plate, so if you're fine with that, then maybe it gets a little bit higher for you, but it all kind of comes back together in the end, and they do a good job of bringing it all together, I guess, but I think it's a decent plot. I give it I give it a 2 out of 3. For the acting, I actually give it a 2.5. The reason I gave it a little bit higher was I felt like I was watching a cringy late night talk show because I do not like watching late night talk shows. So that was very solid. Chris Dew does a great job of pretending to be a very crappy medium, I guess, because he does your stereotypical reaching for straws in the crowd, a, a Dave or Davis or Dennis or something like that. And just along those lines and just being super scummy. But I felt like he did a really good job. I thought he was annoying. And so kudos, they proved exactly that they got the exact i guess feeling that they were trying to elicit with that so 2.5 out of 3 for me for the acting it wasn't terrible for the cinematography i gave it a one it would have gotten higher if it didn't keep going from black to white between shots i mean i like the aspect ratio of it since it was supposed to be an older tv show but why did we need to go to black and white between the cuts of the show i mean at the end of it it's in color so why was it not in color during it are you implying that during this time everything was just black and white and that's just the way it was the world was in black and white panorama filters or something like that because it was just it wasn't part of the show it wasn't part of anything afterwards because at the end they put it in color anyway so that wasn't good also the really bad cgi on his wife definitely didn't help but i mean they tried they tried with the aspect ratio which i liked but then they just went ahead and ruined it with some of the other stuff that they did so it only gets the one out of the three for me for the bonus I'll go ahead and give it the full bonus point. Like I said, I like the premise. It's very different from a lot of the stuff that you see out nowadays. I don't think there's a whole bunch of horror movies that are based off of TV shows or in a TV show setting. It also kind of keeps everything for the most part located in one 
like main area, which I like if you watched my last shift review, that was one of the reasons why I really liked it. They kept it all in one setting, kept it super simple. So they did good with that and keeping it very straight to the point. It's just there were some other things about it that I didn't like too much. So unfortunately, that brought it down just a little bit for me. But enough of my rambling and ranting. Why don't we go ahead and put together the total score and add that up for you non-mathletes out there. My total score, once we take the two for the plot, the 2.5 for the acting, the one for the cinema, and the one for the bonus point, we are walking out of here with a total score of 6.5 out of 10, which if we compare that to the IMDb, it was a 7.1 out of 10. So pretty close. I mean, it's obviously still a little bit off, but it's close. It's not completely out of the realm of possibility that maybe other people liked it a little bit more than me, which speaking of that, maybe you'll like it a little bit more than me. If you'd like to watch this yourself, go for it. I'm, I'm not the one that controls your watching habits. I don't have a parental lock on your TV or your Amazon Prime or anything like that. So if you want to watch it, go for it. I feel like it could be something fun if people want to watch it. It's a little bit of a time crunch. I probably shouldn't have reviewed it at four in the morning, but hey, mistakes are there to be made. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this review. I might be doing a couple different things on the channel here soon just because I, I want to do different stuff. It seems fun and that's what I'm going to do. So thank you to everyone who stopped by and watched. For those of you who are here for the first time, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked my review of Late Night with the Devil. If not, go Go watch Late Night with the Devil. I don't know what to tell you, but thanks again for stopping by and listening. For everyone who subscribed, we're doing excellent things on the channel. But until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, wonderful week, or wonderful whatever period of time you'd like to enjoy. But once again, I will see you all in the next one.